All right, boys and girls, welcome back to Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, and this video will be a little different. I'm not going to ask you to write code with me this time, but I'm going to talk about the year 2020, when it's meant for Rock the JVM, and where it's headed in 2021 and beyond. So, first of all, I want to thank you for watching this video right now. The channel has grown from absolute zero to exactly 3,468 subscribers as I'm recording this on December 7th, 2020. So, if you're subscribed to the channel, I want to thank you personally for supporting me with your attention and your feedback throughout this year. You've been basically the bloodline of my content creation motivation this year. Now, particularly on YouTube, the most popular popular content was the Scala at Lightspeed miniseries. This was watched between 2,000 and 7,000 times, uh, depending on the video, so roughly 4,000 times on average, and uh, I'm really happy about that, especially since uh, the channel was completely blank with zero subscribers at the time that I launched Scala at Lightspeed. This was my very first upload. So I'm really happy about uh, Scala at Lightspeed being popular and uh, being valuable for you guys. And you can also download Scala at Lightspeed by going to Rock the JVM. So you can go to rockthejvm.com and you can also enroll in the Scala at Lightspeed mini series. You can click it right here and then you can simply enroll. It's completely free and you can also have access to the videos in downloadable form if you want to watch them offline. Now, getting back to YouTube, I also ran a small experiment because I posted a three-hour Java tutorial for beginners, which was shot in a pretty weird half-screen ratio. So as you can see it right now, I have a wide screen, but I shot it on half-screen. And the idea that uh, the I assumed that switching between windows is very frustrating if you're watching a tutorial and coding at the same time. So I figured you watch uh, a video on the left and coding on the right or vice versa and basically eliminate this switching frustration. Now, although people did like the content, they didn't scream any wows for this usability. So I kept recording my content widescreen, which is what you're also seeing right now in this particular video. Now, coming back to YouTube, some other honorable mentions include some practical things like setting your own HTTP server with Aqua HTTP, the type level programming miniseries this was really popular because this was pretty mind-bending and brain-frying, so you might want to check this out. And things like monads and pattern matching and streaming with Kafka streams, Aka streams, Spark streaming, and things of that sort. But there are way more videos to be found in here, especially related to Scala 3. This is becoming really popular and this will give you an upper hand. And uh, I wanted to rock the JVM to have uh, some of the first videos on YouTube about Scala 3, so definitely check check them out and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Now, the second thing that I've changed in terms of content creation is to create a blog. So you can find the blog at blog.rockthejvm.com. And basically every single standalone video that you can find on YouTube has a written form here at the blog. So you can check blog.rockthejvm.com and I have here articles for every single thing that I shot on YouTube in written form so that you can refer to these concepts later. And even the video that you're watching right now has a corresponding article where I detail some of the decisions that I've made while developing Rock the JVM this year. So I detail some of the choices about the blog and about the socials, which I'm going to talk about shortly, about YouTube and the courses, and I'm going to talk about those as well. So speaking of socials, I'm active on Twitter mostly. So on Twitter, I'm looking at 581 followers at this point. I started with absolute zero, and as some of you may know, it's really hard to grow a following on Twitter, but I try to post something interesting every single day on Twitter, and I will continue to do so. And uh, LinkedIn is pretty much the same. Now, another thing that was pretty massive for Rock the JVM was corporate training because I landed some of my biggest clients this year, including Adobe and Apple with Scala and functional programming and Spark performance optimization techniques. And here you can find a small clip with me near the Apple Park in preparation for the Spark optimization training. But that was before the pandemic hit in full force because even though I love interacting with a live class, I needed to move my training sessions remote. So everything turned to video 
protocols and people were very very kind in joining me with more energy than they're normally used to so i really appreciate that so if you happen to watch this video and uh, have joined me in a live training thank you for uh, boosting your own energy in one of the classes by the way if you need any corporate training you can find me at daniel at rock the gvm.com for any training in 2021 now the final thing that i'm going to talk about is of course courses because i've put all the new content here at the website rockthejvm.com. This is where I also store all my content that I uh, used to put on Udemy. So every single piece of content that I've ever put out is now on the Rock the JVM website, including links to the blog, links to YouTube, and all the courses that you are used to, including Scala for Beginners, Advanced Scala, Functional Programming Practice, and all these bundles that you can also purchase in pack. They offer some pretty massive discounts. Now, speaking of 2020 in particular, the new content that I've added here is the course on CATS, which is one of the most popular functional programming libraries in the Scala ecosystem, and finishing the Apache Spark series with Spark Streaming, Spark Optimization, and Spark Performance Tuning, also known as Spark Optimization 2. These were the hardest courses that I've ever recorded, and the concepts and the techniques here are quite hard to put into words, but I really hope that they're really clear and really practical. And the final thing that I want to talk about is the roadmap for 2021. I've received quite a bunch of requests here for new courses and new kinds of material. And my roadmap is pretty unclear at the moment. And uh, the only thing that I'm really committed to is updating the Scala series for Scala 3, but because this is going to be a massive change in the Scala ecosystem. So I want to be one of the first people to put out updated content content for Scala 3, so expect all the courses here to be updated for Scala 3. And I also want to finish up the CATS series because the CATS course is now on CATS 2.0, and um, after Scala 3 arrives, we will have CATS and CATS Effect 3.0. So I want to update that for CATS Effect 3, and also include some projects here for the Scala and for the CATS courses. If my time permits, and also depending on the Aka update roadmap, um, I might update the Aka series to Aka typed and um, make sure that the Aka series is updated for a long time because this has been a massive, massive amount of work. The Aka series has close to 50 hours of content, so it will take me pretty much half a year to update all the Aka series. But um, I might also include a bunch of surprises here on the Rock the JVM website, so I am thinking about including other kinds of tools for Scala, including maybe Zio or something along those lines, you'll wait until you see it. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and sign up for the Rock the JVM website. If you create an account, I will also send you occasional updates on what I'm working on. No spam, I promise. I only send maybe an email a month. And um, you'll also be one of the first to get updated about upcoming material. Now, besides additional courses, I will also continue posting free content here on the blog and on the YouTube channel. I will want to post at least one piece every single week. Right now on the blog, we have exactly 53 articles, which is more than one per week for 2020, which I'm quite happy about. So I will continue to do that. I'll strive for two pieces a week, and I'll strive for an interesting piece of content here on the Twitter channel and on LinkedIn at least once a day. But in any event, despite all the emotional roller coasters and the uncertainty in the air for 2020, this has been a year for growth here at Rock the JVM on so many levels, and I have you to thank. So I want to share a massive thank you for your support and feedback, for your comments, for your encouragement, and for your trust. Thank you for sharing your most valuable asset with me, which is your time. So I hope I'll make Rock the JVM even better for you in 2021.